Dark Cast Network, Indie Pods with a Dark Side. Hi, this is Jenna. And this is Kelly. And you're listening to ODFM. This episode is One Detonation for Murder. This is exciting. Yes. So this, you know, we kind of did like a short one, a mini-sode that had a detonation, but it wasn't a, the official episode. So this is a different... So this is a different... A detonation. different one, but it's a very big detonation. Yes. And it reminds me of the first season where we did that one where there was Let's Go Dynamiting. Yes. That was Why such a I didn't good name one. that one Dynamite for Murder? Except right. that that was a side story of the thing and it didn't actually have to do with the murder. It was just a... What was the name? That was one? just a for so, for fun on the side. That was disparagement. Disparagement. That was a that was, that was a, a bonus vocab word. Yes. That yeah. I had to look up in the <laughs> bonus. dictionary. I didn't know that one. <laughs> I have a feeling we have a lot of those coming up. All right. So um with this story, you've probably seen some video or coverage of it. Okay. At some point. I remember when I did and it was uh, it made me nauseous. Oh, boy. Video oh, God. Coverage. Yeah. So it made such an impression that I've never forgotten it, which, you know, I forget all the stories. So this then this is huge. But I didn't know much about the story behind it. Like, you know, I'd seen the video of it, didn't know what kind of caused it. Mm. And it kind of got solved recently. So oh. I'm trying to make it as clear as possible. Bring it there's, yes. back full circle now. All right. I You got my attention. So there's a lot of characters. So oh, I actually boy. printed out pictures of people to help us. Oh, thank God. To help us out. It's just like, I have a piece of paper here. Should I be drawing like a tree? I know. Should I? Yeah, maybe. Because <laughs> it is like that. It's like you could have a poster board of how all these people relate back to it. So, Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So we're starting out on August 28th of 2003. It feels like not no. that long ago. That feels very fresh. Yeah. So okay. a man walks into a PNC bank in Erie, Pennsylvania. He's got a bomb fastened around his neck and he's <gasps> carrying a cane that's also a gun. Where does one get a cane that's also a right. gun? That's like spy shit. Exactly. <laughs> he's calm. He's unhurried. He walks in. He actually stands in line for a little bit. And then he's like, oh, I should with probably go talk to him. With a bomb on right. his neck? Right. And it's huge. And it's covered but, with a t-shirt a little bit. But I mean, it's <laughs> obviously like this huge device on him. You know, it's, it's you hard know what? to mix. People probably thought he was like disabled in some way. And they just were trying not to stare. Probably, actually. <laughs> you know probably. what I mean? They're just like, don't Seriously. look. You know, my. What's the matter with that? Shh. We don't we don't stare. We don't point and we don't stare. Yeah. So he's he's first standing in line. Then he's like, oh, I better go up to t- the tellers. He waits. Yeah, he waited at first. So he goes up to the tellers, kind of sidesteps the, the queue, goes up to the tellers, hands him a note. And then he pulls a lollipop out and starts sucking on the lollipop at the teller desk. You know how I, they have the I baskets. Just have, I was just going to say, he just takes one of yep. their lollipops. Nice. And he's like, eh, whatever. This is a normal right. day. Wow. He's awfully chill for something with an explosive device. Very chill, yeah. This note, though, it's not like the usual ones bank robbers give that say something like, I'm armed, give me all your money. That would be nice. This note is like a very long ass note, (laughs) like like legit nine pages of rambling. Front and back. Sorry, I pulled a... I pulled a friend's. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But you had rambled on. (laughs) For for nine pages. Nine pages. It, by the time we read this, the bomb's going to go off. So Right, exactly. The time is of the essence here, people. But some of the pages are meant for the teller, some are for the police, and others were instructions for the bank robber guy himself. His own instructions were in there? Oh, okay. I'm so confused. Let's go. Okay. The note for the bank, it demanded $250,000 and said there's a limited time before this bomb goes off. So... You need to get this done, basically. And I've already wasted 10 of them. Seriously, have a 10 read minutes this of it by note. having a, right, with the note, <laughs> and I stood in line and I had a lollipop. <laughs> no. So <laughs> instead of $250,000, because the bank manager wasn't there, this is during lunchtime. Bank manager's not there, who would have to be the person to open the vault to get the Don't they money. have to have coverage for that shit when people go on lunch? You would think. Yeah, but nope. Uh, they're not there, so he can't get the $250,000 oh, sh- in time. Oh, God. Okay. Before the person comes back. So he's like, okay, well, give me what you got. They give him $8,000 about, a little bit over $8,000. It's so out of there. not anywhere close. Not anywhere close. So he walks out of the bank, sucker's still in his mouth. 
and doesn't get far as stopped by the police. So he yeah. only gets okay. maybe a block away in his car. So this guy, he looks odd with this bulky object under his right. shirt. Okay. He's pulled out of his car. He's handcuffed by police. Is no one worried that this bomb's going to go off? Exactly. What? Nobody's worried. So he tells police, yo, I got a bomb. And <laughs> yo, <laughs> he probably didn't say it like that. Right. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. So they pull up the T-shirt wrapped over him and they see a big object with a blinking light. Oh, God. <laughs> and they also see something that's locked onto his neck. And it looks like handcuffs, but it's a single one for a neck. So oh. it's like that type of that. Neck cuffs? In. <laughs> yeah, like a neck cuff. Weird. Freaking okay. weird. But it's sized to fit his neck. This is the guy. I'll show you a picture of the guy that was. Okay. This is Brian. This is Brian. Brian looks like pretty tame from his Pretty normal. Photo. Right. Yeah. Just he's a middle-aged white guy with glasses, balding. Normal okay. dude. Normal looking guy. Let's see. They immediately, the police, so they're like, oh, this thing's not, he's not joking. This is a bomb. So they back right. away. <laughs> they draw their guns on him. Like, what what's are they he going to do? do? Shoot the bomb? Right. How is that going to make it better? <laughs> Pew, 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 pew. So they leave this guy, Brian, sitting on the pavement near his car. And he's that just He's also an explosive object. Right. Don't yeah. come by his car, man. There's gas in the... Okay. All right. I'm going to stop commenting. I know. There's so many things. in my mind right now. So okay. police create a perimeter. And they close off the road near the location they're on. And they call the bomb squad. Unfortunately, the bomb squad's like 10 miles away. And oh, the major... <laughs> road that they blocked off mm -hmm. is now loaded with traffic okay. and the bomb squad can't get there so oh, it's going super slow i know it's just a whole fuck up the whole way okay. anyway the robber's calm but he begins getting agitated when a beeping sound begins and he's like um yeah would you guys please read these notes and, and it'll tell you where to go for the next place and the next place to get the keys to take this bomb off of me. You need Why to go do this. Why does he wait so long to have this info? Okay. Well, he's it's all happening pretty quickly. Okay, but, but still. Still, he tells the police, he's like, some black men, they put a bomb around my neck when I delivered a pizza to them and they told me to follow instructions on the notes that they gave me. Again, he's very calm for he's somebody calm. who just had this situation. Exactly. Well. I think he thinks the bomb isn't real. At first. Okay. The notes they gave him said he's to rob a bank, he's to head to further locations, and eventually get the keys to unlock the bomb and drop the money off at a location for the kidnappers. No wonder he was like, whatever, just give me whatever you have. I don't yeah, care. I don't care. Okay. Get me out of here. Right. I have another pizza to deliver. Like, Domino's only gives me 30 minutes. <laughs> yes. And these pies are getting cold. Come on. <laughs> so <laughs> the beeping gets faster. The bomb squad's still not there. Oh my God. The cops also start hearing the beeping and it's going faster and faster. And oh he's like, they're like, oh shit, this guy's not lying. This bomb is yeah. real. But at first, they really thought it was fake. Then a loud explosion. Oh! Shakes the area as the bomb detonates around the man's fucking neck. And that's <gasps> the news coverage I had seen. Whoa. I mean, all these news cameras were there before the, the bomb squad. And they're recording this guy like, whoa, what's happening? I do not remember this. Oh. Where was I in 2003 I that know. I don't remember this? I just remember seeing coverage on it and was like, oh, my God, this is horrifying. Horrifying. Why wasn't this guy more freaked out in this situation? I really think he thought it was fake at first. Like he thought, OK, I'll just get this over with and whatever. But or he wasn't. He was naive, maybe. Right. OK. So the bomb squad arrives a short bit later. <laughs> Great. They'd been four blocks away when the bomb exploded. Oh, my God. Uh, the robber was killed when a hole around eight inches by ten inches was blown in his chest <gasps> by the bomb. Oh, my God. <sighs> so the bombs, it didn't blow his neck off, surprisingly, but I think I'm, it was below. His head it was, was sitting, still attached. His I'm head was still there. Surprised. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah. yeah. So the bomb squad, they clear the area. They make sure he's not booby-trapped with more bombs because they think maybe his oh car Oh, my God. Is... At this point, yeah. What could happen? Right. They don't find any more bombs in his car or on him. In his car, they do find the cane gun, which actually is a working device. They, I think he didn't really realize it was real at the time, too. And it was loaded. What is with this guy? <laughs> I know. He's just like, la, la, la. This happens all the time when I deliver pizzas. Right. Exactly. They also find all the notes the robber was talking about. 
but he had kept telling him, <laughs> would you read the freaking notes? Help me out. I've got a packet here. I've got <laughs> I've got a presentation. Uh, he pulls out his computer with the whole. Right. And he brings up like a whole PowerPoint <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> presentation. That probably would have been faster. It would have been a lot faster. Yeah. So police decide, OK, we're going to follow all these clues that are written on the notes to see, you know, if they can catch up right. with whoever he said kidnapped him. But the notes are so detailed that it's freaking weird. It's like really wordy. <laughs> so they even had really well-drawn directions that showed exactly where drop-offs for the next clues would be. Like a sign, a yield sign, and exactly like a rock. And it's going to be under this rock, you know, like wow. literally drawn. So <laughs> they go to the next area, the next one that was in the scavenger hunt, basically. <laughs> and they find a coffee can next to a yield sign, just like it showed in this picture, and find another clue. So they follow that clue to a forested area. You know, if people weren't dying, this would be a fun game. Right. Yeah, it was a great scavenger hunt. But they go to this this uh, forested area and across a clearing past the wooded area, police see a man starting to walk towards the area they were headed towards. Uh-oh. And when the figure spots the police, he quickly runs away and books it out of there. Oh, oh boy. Cops are trying to hurry to follow him, but they just see him at a distance and they see him drive away in a blue van. Okay. They're like, this could be something. This could be like some other person randomly there. I don't know. So they start Who their just investigation. Also was afraid of the cops for yeah. no reason. <laughs> okay. I see cops, I run. They start their investigation with finding out more about Brian. Brian. Okay. Brian Wells is a pizza shop worker. He wasn't lying. A call came in that day to the pizza parlor at about 1.30 p.m. The owner of the pizza shop initially took the call, but then handed the phone off to Brian because he couldn't hear well or understand what the people okay. wanted. So Brian took the order and he wrote down directions to the area he was supposed to deliver pizza to. You would think 2003, we had cell phones and everything. Yeah, but, okay. But the place he delivered the pizzas to was a remote area that just okay. had a radio tower on it. It wasn't an actual address. So that's why he oh. had to write out the directions. Because he's like, this has no address. Okay. Oh, okay. So he's going to deliver this pizza thinking maybe it's just a meetup. You know, people are having fun out okay. in the woods. I yeah. don't know. That's really weird. I like, I feel like the pizza would be like, yeah, we just don't deliver to there. Sorry. Drive your ass in. <laughs> it's just this little mom and pop shop. Okay. So, so they're like, all right. Yeah. I think it was even called Mama Mia's or something. But oh. Yes. So police go to Brian's house and they search it. And, you know, they're worried there's bombs there, but there's nothing related to bombs. But they do find that he had rented this house from a woman that lived on the same property and they didn't find anything damning, but they did find an address books, like a black book, basically, with names and numbers of local prostitutes. Oh, mm. literally a little black a little book. Black okay. Book. Wow. So okay. they took that. So just in case. Well, you just know, in case, case they... they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just we're in bored case today. they needed to have those <laughs> numbers for an occasion at a late night something. <laughs> yes, okay. rendezvous. I'm just going to confiscate this. Yeah, I'm just gonna we put better this in take my pocket. this. Yeah. Okay, so they go to the site where the pizza's delivered so they could check that out. They find tire impressions that match Brian's car and even shoe prints that match his shoes okay. that he's wearing. They also note that there's scuffle marks in the dirt indicating what they think is a struggle of some kind. Okay. So they're like, this guy was actually telling the truth, we think. Okay. Oh, this is rough. So at the coroner's office, they begin trying to figure out the bomb collar. It's still attached to Brian. Oh, jeez. And in the note they had recovered, it had said that the bomb was booby-trapped, that if they were to forcefully try to remove it, it would explode. Oh. Of course they're afraid to mess with it. And it was kind of interesting, like... It had all this misleading information on it. it. They found out later. It had this box and it had all these wires and devices inside of it. And it said, do not touch this, you know, touch danger, all these things. So, jeez, oh, they're okay. like, well, we don't know what to do with this. They're afraid to mess with it. So the decision was made to decapitate Brian to remove the device. Oh, God. So that they didn't have to remove the yeah. neck part. Mess oh, up. my mm -hmm. God. Yeah, pretty rough. Pretty rough. Police do get the bomb off, obviously. They're able to reconstruct it. They found a bunch of the pieces that had blown apart and okay. reconstructed it. And they find most of the components. 
And the first timer in the bomb was activated by pulling a pin like you would on a grenade. Okay. And it activated a timer. And oh, the thing that stuck out to officials on the device was all of the red herrings that were involved in it. So they believed it was designed to, like, prevent the bomb squad from tampering with it if they got to Brian first. Oh, wow. So it had things like wires that didn't do anything. It had a cell phone that didn't have anything to do with the bomb. I mean, these, it was. Oh, my really... gosh. All this stuff to throw them off and make it look more complicated than it was. Totally. Totally. <sighs> Yeah, all these warning labels all over the device. And it's similar to the instructions given to Brian in that it's like super overly worded. It alluded to a lot of booby traps just to to put the bomb squad off of trying to solve it. And I think in making it so that it took longer for them to figure out how to, you know, he'd have time to blow it up. Anybody else hurt besides this Brian guy? No, because they had made such a perimeter and it wasn't a very um, super strong bomb. They had tried to make it so it would have uh, shrapnel, but they it didn't work, thankfully. That blew off of it. It just blew up. I cannot him. for the life of me figure out what the motive in this entire situation was. Exactly. And that's why police <laughs> are just like baffled. They're I mean, like, nobody benefited from this at all. And obviously, I think they planned for Brian to die. You know, with this, because gotcha. there would be no way to get it done. The device is unique in that it has four key locks. So it have to have four keys that unlocked it. And it had a tumbler lock, like a combination lock on it. This is way overly complicated. So it would be like really hard to get off his neck in time anyway. So police don't think he was ever going to get the keys that he was going to die. They thought the scavenger hunt was also a diversion to lead the police on a wild goose chase afterwards. They reenact the scavenger hunt themselves to see if it's even possible to complete from start to finish. Okay. And there is no way to complete it in the allotted time. And like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Even in so the best So even conditions. if he hadn't stopped for the lollipop. Yep. Okay. There were no, that wasn't no the way. thing. Okay. Got nope. it. Okay. So, <laughs> police, so that was just weird. And seeing, <laughs> they have a video of him actually like, what you know, hell? hanging out. When studying in the notes from the kidnapper or kidnappers, police are hoping a handwriting analysis would lead them somewhere. But they figured out that the note had been traced from a type note. So there's no way to match it because it wasn't actual handwriting. So like they had a, the note typed out and they placed a piece of paper over the top of it and traced it. This fucking nine oh my pages. God, that's a lot of time too. It's so much work. But they did find that it had been done on a pad of paper. So they were able to take impressions from notes that had been written prior oh. to that. Yes. Oh, I remember that from like being a kid and watching like after school shows and stuff. And they're like, what you do is, is you take the side of the pencil. <laughs> yes. And you, and you, you do the scratchy thing. Right. Yes. And so you can see what's, a, I remember <laughs> that. I remember trying to do that at home. And basically all I found was like my mom's grocery list. Grocery list. Or like, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Yep. Because that was all the right? excitement was, oh. I wonder what was written on here. This is what they got me for Christmas. Nope. It was like eggs, bread, milk. I'm like oh. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, eggs these days are a great gift. So this is true. Okay. <laughs> no, knock it. This, well, uh, you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> so they got this impression. It didn't seem to say anything that they could tell, really. But they did get impressions of handwriting. Okay. At least it was something to compare to. So they had some kind of handwriting. Right. Just not of just it not writing anything words. they needed. Right. FBI profilers, like they bring in the FBI because this is a bombing case. So and ATF. It makes okay. It big. FBI profilers say the mastermind of the scheme had to be mechanically inclined, likely frugal and extremely smart. Okay. Police make an appointment to meet with one of Brian's co-workers so they could um, know more about Brian and find out what could have happened with this. Right. So this friend's name is Bob Panetti. Wait till you see Bob. Hi, Bob. He's <laughs> so happy. <laughs> He's so excited about life. Oh, my yep. God. Another middle-aged white guy, but, like, just way too happy for his own good. He looks like he's going to sing a limerick. He kind of <laughs> looks like he's a, I'm not going to tell you a limerick. So that's Bob. They make this meeting to meet with Bob. However, he calls and reschedules with them for another day because they were going to meet him at the pizza parlor. Maybe he was too busy, whatever. We got a lot of orders today, guys. So we many just orders. Got, We've got it. Yeah. so many radio towers. 
<laughs> it gets weirder, though, because the day before their meeting, Bob is found unresponsive in his home. So this <gasps> is just three days after Brian's death. And apparently right after Brian's death, Bob had become very paranoid that someone was coming for him. Did he scare himself into like I a... Know. Like is this some okay. devious plot? After his autopsy, his death is ruled an accidental overdose, like a okay. drug overdose. So please don't know if it's related to Brian's case or if it's a weird coincidence or maybe he was so stressed by the event. He took a right. bunch of drugs. So they're considering three scenarios. One, that Brian committed the heist himself, but then why use a live bomb and uh, yeah. risk killing yourself? Two, yeah. that he was abducted by others and told he had, you know, 55 minutes to rob a bank, get back with the money before the bomb goes off. Okay. Three, that Brian and Bob planned the robbery together, but then again, why a live bomb? It's, this is all very strange. It's just very strange. They were okay. just so confused, too. Three weeks after Brian's death, police get this 911 call, and I have to play it for you because it's just Ooh. so good. Okay. We love the 911 calls. I, seriously. Uh, at 8645 P Street in the garage, there is a frozen body. It's in the freezer in the garage. There is a woman there that you might want to pick up and question. 8645 P Street? Yes. How do you know that, sir? Trust me, I know. Who are you? I'm the guy who lives there. What is your name, sir? Bill Rothstein. Great, what? huh? I know. Wait, wait. I'm a guy who lives there. Yeah. What? I know. What a the hell? Frozen body. You want to talk to a woman that's there, but I'm the guy that lives there. I kind of want to talk to you too, man. Right. No, I need <laughs> to know what you have to say. Right? Yeah. Like, this is a big deal. What? There's a frozen body? Okay. What? So it seems unrelated <laughs> at this point. But police recognize the name of the caller. Bill Rothstein. What's his okay. name? So here's Bill. Big Bill. There's Bill, another, another <laughs> later, <laughs> later in life. <laughs> yeah. White guy. White guy. Yep. In overalls. No, Bill. Please actually know Bill. They recognize that name. That's a bad sign. Yeah. They never want to be known. <laughs> right, by police. But this isn't a bad one. He, he okay. happens to be related to one of the cops. Oh, okay. Through, okay. through marriage. Bill says that the man in the freezer is an ex-boyfriend of Marge's that passed away. So Marge is... A friend of his. Here's Marge. There's Marge. Little, Where's little scary. Where are Marge's eyebrows? Why does Marge have no eyebrows? <laughs> that is so exciting that you noticed that. Yes. She looks cre- Well, because people without eyebrows look creepy. I'll explain that to you later. Yes, there is a reason. Okay, so. <laughs> She's a middle-aged white woman. <laughs> she is another middle-aged white woman. None of these people woman. are doing us any favors here. <laughs> nope. Okay. He, he had said, you know, come to this house, come get this Marge in that recording. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He tells police that Marge is highly intelligent and manipulates people easily. And he's known her for something like 50 years. Oh, boy. And he says, yeah, Marge is bipolar. She's been asking him to put this frozen body that is in his freezer through a wood chipper. I, I need you to do me a favor. Exactly. I know, <laughs> exactly. Favor. And they're like, what? How did you get this body? What are you talking about? What? It gets better. So coincidentally, this house is all this that is happening there is Bill's house. And it's just a short road from a, like a short little pathway from the radio okay. tower where Brian <laughs> delivered the pizzas. Yeah. So police are like, what are the chances that these two incidents would occur within a month of each other right. in that and same area? All very weird things. Very weird things. So police take Marjorie. So there's Marge again. They take her full name is Marjorie Deal Armstrong. Okay. So they take her into custody. They bring Bill in for questioning. And Bill tells them that Marge had called him a while back and had asked him to help her get rid of a body. Bill has apparently always been a lifelong sucker for Marge. Like, he will do since they really? were young. Have you seen Marge? I'm, I don't understand. I'll have, to, I'll have to find you a young picture of Marge because she was quite beautiful when she was young. Okay. But. So she just didn't age well. Also... Yeah, you want to make someone ugly real fast? Yeah. Take off their Take eyebrows. Take their eyebrows. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Seriously, but he's still into her. So they had dated at one time, but they remained lifelong friends. Now they're both in their 70s, and it seems that anything Marge asks Bill to do, he'll do. Um, That's not like come mow my lawn. Yeah. That's like put a 
body in a wood a chipper. Why body, do you have yeah. a body? Why do you have the body, dude? He tells police that Marta told him that she had killed her boyfriend, Jim. Let me show you Jim. That's a Jim. Oh, boy. That's a younger, a younger. He is a younger man. White guy. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, nice, nice uh, beard-ish thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, goatee. Wait, hold it up taller. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Jim. Right. He's not bad. He's okay. He's all um, right, yeah. So she said she had told him that she killed her boyfriend, Jim, and that she needed his help to get rid of the body. He told police that Marge had killed Jim because he knew Marge was involved with bank heist and was going to turn her in. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I know of a recent bank heist. Yeah. Weird. There was Tempted. one that just happened. One yeah. attempted. Yeah, exactly. Didn't go so well. He said he brought Jim's body back to the, his house. He wraps him in a tarp, tapes it all closed, and jams him into a freezer in his garage. And then calls 911 on himself and her? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why would he go? If he was just going to turn them in, why would he? He why kept get claiming he was afraid of her and that he thought she would try to implicate him in, somehow in it all. So He's kind of. He's kind of pushing himself into it. Dating himself. I mean, like, he already wrapped it up and, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So Marge, though, she tells police, I have nothing to do with this. Of course. This is Jim Roden. And she's like, I have nothing to do with Jim Roden's death. Of course I don't. So she claims she had come home one day to her house and she had found him dead. But she thought that Bill killed him. And since she's so close to Bill, she doesn't want him to get in trouble. (laughs) When they okay, when, yeah. So she's like, "Well, so I told him, clean up your mess." No, <laughs> right. like, that's what I was just thinking. Was, dude, don't just leave him here. <laughs> He's like, "Uh, surprise." So when asked why Bill would blame Jim's death on her, Marge says because she had thought that Bill was involved with the bombing case. That's what it was, okay. and he wanted to frame her for something to get her to shut up about it. So they're both claiming the other is involved with the bombing case, and the other and killed Jim, responsible for this Jim guy. Uh, it's so convoluted. Yeah. But for police looking into Marge's past is like opening up a can of worms. Like what oh the fuck? Yes. So she grew up extremely intelligent, like genius level intelligent. Okay. She had gotten a master's degree in education. She was also gorgeous, beautiful when she was young, striking and men flocked to her. But unfortunately at age 23, she sought out help of a doctor because she was aware something was terribly wrong mentally for her. Okay. Okay. So she gets diagnosed with several me- mental illnesses. Like, there is a list. There's oh, everything gosh. from bipolar to dissocial and everything in between. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. So this mental illness is so difficult. Like, she can't work. She can't hold down, down jobs. Relationships don't last long. It's really rough. So she had a brief marriage, but she was widowed when her husband fell and hit his head on a coffee table and died. After huh. which Marge hmm. sued the hospital for negligence and won, I don't know how, uh, I think he had a stroke or something after hitting his head there. And she had sued them and won like $175,000 settlement. But then, oh my God. But this is really weird. So before her husband was buried, this kind of shows the type of person Marge was. She asked for a piece of his leg bone to keep. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. Uh, what? Mm-hmm. Uh, can I have a piece of his leg bone, please? So she wanted to keep it in case she could clone him in the future. I'm, I'm, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like people clone their dogs. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna clone this man. My, are you uh, weird? Uh, 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 but that's not all. Did, did, she, did she get it? I don't think so. I don't okay, think I just was like. I, they're, they were going to give it to things? her, right? Can I have a toe? Can I have a <laughs> I, I just want something to remember. Oh, by. my God. Just a pinky. Just, I just, need just a something pinky. little. I don't need much. <laughs> this little piggy uh, went this, all the way up. <laughs> this oh one piggy God. stayed. It's, this one be- this little piggy stayed home. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so Rough. twisted and weird. Okay. So weird. But then there were her other dead boyfriends. Uh, the- yeah. In fact, there were at least five who died in questionable circumstances in her and life. And no one put the pieces together yet. Okay. Yeah. But Bill had been the one who evaded her curse. He was like the one, the single one. He's the one who sees it all, and yet he still uh, 
there. Bill hangs out. Yeah. Something's wrong with Bill. Something's <laughs> also wrong with Bill. Yes. Though the two had dated early in life, I think like in their 20s, okay, Bill had wow. nev- Bill never dated another woman after March. No, I, I mean, I broke well, him. No. <laughs> she totally broke him. I ruined him. I done for broke all that other man. Women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's always had this like power over him. She could get him to do anything for her. Bill himself, he is extremely intelligent. He was genius level. As not well. that intelligent. I no, mean, <laughs> not streetwise. We're talking. We're talking book intelligence. This is all book smarts, obviously. Yeah, book smarts. But he was also kind and generous. Everybody that knew him really liked him. He was a okay. really nice guy. However, a friend did describe him as not a finisher. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that why they stopped dating? <laughs> I, th- I thought of that, too. I was like, whoa, are we talking sexually? Maybe everything. Uh, but yeah, no, he said it was the, he's the type of person who always started ambitious things like college or mm. earning a pilot's license, but would never finish. So gotcha. he, too, had... <laughs> Troubles with keeping jobs. He also didn't put the guy in the wood chipper like he said he right. was. Right. So. He did not finish that either. Look at this non-finisher. Marge, you should have asked a finisher. Right. But, it's a, yeah. Marge, yeah. you should have known better than to ask him to do something for you. <laughs> he, he never doesn't finishes. doesn't follow through. He's not a finisher. <laughs> that was the best quote. Not a finisher. So even though Marge actually had a, quite a lot of money due to many l- lawsuits she won for various matters. She's, a, she's one, of one of those people who's like. Lawsuit happy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She likes to sue. Marge's mental illness exhibited itself in major hoarding problems. Like, whoa, her oh place boy. is filthy. It's covered wall to wall in junk. There's dead animals mixed oh in. Oh, God. Oh. And actually, Bill is also a hoarder. And his house mirrored My Marge's. God. It is disgusting. I'll have to show you guys pictures. Ugh. Oh bad. Oh, my gosh. Police have to go search her house. Mm. Oh, God. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not gonna easy. It's going to take a while. Yeah, seriously. So they, they dig up info from her long, tumultuous life. I mean, she's in her 70s. Police find that Marge had been in trouble before. So in 1984, she had gone to trial for murder. Oh. Mm. Wait. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. So many. Remember all these boyfriends that oh died? Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she had <laughs> shot and killed a boyfriend named Robert Thomas. Don't have a picture of Robert. Oh, my God. Robert had been sleeping on the couch when Marge had unloaded a shotgun on him. <gasps> but she was acquitted when she pled self-defense because of an abusive marriage. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. But what? Yeah. Uh, I know. As for Jim, the freezer man, turns out his body was in the freezer for three weeks before the bank heist. So he didn't. So Bill didn't call right away. He didn't call. And. Mm -hmm. So he knew something about a bank heist before it even happened, obviously, if that's even the case. Does Marge know that you can break up with people, that things (laughs) don't have to end in death? Has anyone (laughs) mentioned that to her? (gasps) Maybe not. Maybe. Well, maybe she did with Bill and she's like, well, that didn't turn out because he never went away. (laughs) She didn't finish either. (laughs) (laughs) These non-finishers. Oh, God. Okay. So Jim's corpse is in the freezer the whole time the police are searching the area just down the road. Okay. Oh, my God. Crazy. Oh, my God. There's a body in the freezer, in the no. freezer right like, down the street. Right okay. down the street. And it took oh, took four days for Jim's body to thaw so that the <laughs> medical examiners could examine him fully. <sighs> well, you can't just, like, put him in the microwave to, like, thaw him out faster. You have to, no. like, leave him out on the counter and just about, let it. What about cold water trick? Because I use that. Oh, yeah. But right? maybe that would take away evidence. Water. <laughs> oh, maybe that yeah. would take away evidence. So we better right. not do that. They find he had been shot with to death with a shotgun. Oh. Weird. Marge has done that before. Yeah. Ken Barnes. We're going to another guy. Ken oh, Barnes. God. Here we here's, go. All right. Ken. There's Ken. Another <laughs> middle-aged white guy. <clears throat> this one has all his hair, though. He has a lot of hair, and he, he looks a little, little homeless, just a yeah. little bit. Ken's a fishing buddy of Marge's. And okay. he claimed that Marge and Jim fought constantly, and that Marge would always talk about how someday she's going to kill Jim. Just in passing. Just in passing. Um, someday I'm going to kill someday that guy. Someday that's it. I'm just, I, we're going to break up. I can't do it anymore. I'm going to leave him. No, nope, I'm, I'm gonna going kill to kill that him. guy. Yeah. Okay. And Ken even says that she asked a friend how she could get rid of Jim. So, I mean, it wasn't just a she's little talking like, a lot of talk. people about this. Yeah. And, oh, she's a talker. Oh, <laughs> I watched interviews with her and, whoa. 
Oh boy. It goes on and on and on. It's very lengthy. Bill is cooperating with police. So he's taking him through the crime scenes and he gives all the details he can. I mean, going through Marge's house. Oh, oh boy. it was oh, rough. God. Like they were trying to make paths. Yeah, but he probably knows how to navigate that shit. Yeah, he, he does. He's, Let me he's show you how you do this. This Let is me. how we get through. <laughs> It's so terrible. He, for his cooperation, he's on free on bail right then. And he takes a polygraph test, which he passes, but he's also genius level. Oh, person. well, yeah. So so you assume that he knows how to might be one. able to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So something that perked up the cop's ears was when they found out that Bill had a roommate that had moved out of his house the day after the bank heist. So this roommate, here's another guy, Floyd Stockton. Floyd, and he actually looks another, pretty normal. Another white guy. Middle-aged, middle-aged white, white guy. guy. <laughs> so many white guys. Okay. And he actually looks kind of normal. Floyd. Okay. Floyd Stockton. Marge was actually the one who told police about him. Okay. And he had told her that he was fleeing town because there was too much heat near them because of the bombing case. <laughs> so Floyd, this is the reason that he felt there was too much heat on him was he was living with Bill because he was on the run. He was wanted oh for a rape charge in another state. Oh, my God. Police track him down easily, and they're wondering if he's involved with the bombing and robbery. However, they hit a dead end with him and Bill, and they're both cleared by the FBI. Oh, boy. Okay. Although the state police very strongly feel that the both are likely involved in the heist. Okay. Oh, boy. I know. It just is so convoluted. March goes to trial for Jim's murder. And Bill has cut a deal for cooperating. He only spends a few years in prison on misdemeanor oh, wow. okay. charges of abusing a corpse. You All know? I did was tie him up and I froze put him, him in a freezer. Mm-hmm. So Marge always insists that Bill was involved in the bake heist, though. The FBI is very aware of how much Bill fits their profile of the heist mas- mastermind. Okay. Like he fit to a T. They had a whole list and he fit every okay. detail. Always keep an eye on him, hoping like he's going to brag to someone someday about it. Yeah. When Bill is hospitalized with terminal cancer, they jump at the chance that maybe he'll give a deathbed confession. Oh, okay. So they ask him if he has anything to do with Brian's death or the bank heist. Bill couldn't speak at this point, so he used his arm to spell the word no in the air. Oh. And he soon dies in the hospital. So that's all for that guy. Huh. Okay. People knew who knew Bill had speculated that he was the type of person who would really revel in leaving the police with an unsolvable mystery that would go down in history. So they said he would be the type who would never speak. Gotcha. So as for Marge, she does a sudden turnaround and confesses to shooting Jim. Okay. That was unexpected. Yeah. All of a sudden she says, oh, we had a fight over another woman. So Marge gets a plea deal because she's able to claim insanity. Which, oh yeah, my God. Legit. Okay. So she's paroled after a couple of years. Marge also claims knowledge about the bank heist and agrees to speak about it if she can get legal help. She ends up actually getting herself back on the radar with the FBI because she says, <laughs> so. <laughs> Way to go, Marge. Yeah, good job, Marge. Again, book yeah. smart, not street smart. For real. So when she had been arrested for Jim's murder, you know, the police had moved all of her belongings to storage, like all. They had to rent an entire one of those used storage. Frick. Just Yeah, the whole. Seriously. So the FBI goes to sift through the piles and piles of junk. They come across an angry letter Marge had written to a bank. And the bank manager had let Marge's dad empty out his safety deposit box with valuables belonging to her. And she was super angry about it. Oh, And the bank she was very angry at was PNC Bank. Oh. The same one that Brian had robbed. That's interesting. Kind of makes her look suspicious. She says that Bill was the mastermind of the heist, who had wanted the money to settle some money disagreements with his siblings over his estate. Another detail she gives is that Bill had a blue van that he had towed away immediately after the heist and then had it towed back after he'd been cleared by the FBI. So that information hadn't been released to the public. The blue van. Oh, the that blue van that that guy, that other weird guy that they yeah. saw in the field took off in. <gasps> that hadn't been released. <laughs> the FBI decides to start completely over with all the evidence they had collected. Oh, so in the walkthrough video of Bill's house, they watched this video again, you know. Okay. They notice a drawing on a desk. So they zoom in on it 
and notice that the drawing has a diagram with arrows shown exactly drawn exactly the same way as they'd been drawn on the bomb, the actual oh. bomb warnings and stuff. And another lifelong friend of Bill's is asked to look at the heist notes with the impression on them. Oh, with the yeah, handwriting. yeah. And he's like, yeah, that's for sure Bill's handwriting. They think that Bill masterminded the scavenger hunt, though Marge always insisted she had nothing to do with the heist. There's okay. a witness that came forward and they had seen Marge driving around the scavenger hunt area that day. And a UPS driver also says he had seen Marge and Bill at a payphone the time and day where the phone call had been made to order the pizza. They knew where the pizza had been ordered from. It was this payphone right next to oh. the radio tower area. They'd been witnessed together at that area. And she's pretty easily recognizable. And so is Bill. He's a big dude and he always wears okay. overalls. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> you find something you like, you go with it, you know. <laughs> it's comfortable. Yes. Great. But it, then you get to go to the bathroom is a little wonky, but yeah. I know, right? That's what yeah. I feel. But okay. Yeah. So while in jail, cellmates claim Marge told them that she had shot her boyfriend, Jim, because he was going to turn her in for the bank heist. She had also told them that Bill had made the neck bomb and that his friend Floyd was also involved. <sighs> All of her cellmates believe Marge was probably the mastermind because she was so smart and detailed. Oh, my God. It's the battle of the nerds. It's the battle of the nerds. Oh, my who's God. Who's smarter? Who's smarter? Who's smarter? Who, who's smart enough to be the mastermind? Ah, oh, so many people. So the FBI get wind that Ken Barnes, Marge's old fishing buddy, mm -hmm. that he has more information. So they search his house, and they don't really find anything related to the heist other than magazines on building electronics. Okay. But... People can have those. All right. Yeah, absolutely. He told them that Marge solicited him at one point to kill her dad, who she felt was wasting her inheritance. Oh, my God. Stop wasting your money because it goes to me it when goes you die. To, it's mine. <laughs> oh, my God. So she had told Ken, she's like, okay, I'm going to have to rob a bank so that I can get you the money to pay <gasps> you to kill my dad. That's what the bank heist was for? Was what she was doing it for. So now, now that Ken had started talking, the floodgates break open. He confessed oh to knowing the whole bomb and robbery scene. So he says he was in on it and Marge was the mastermind. He says the day before the robbery, there was a meeting at Bill's house to discuss what roles each person would play. So he says oh, Bill, overall's Bill. Marge, overall's Bill, right? Marge with no eyebrows. What, right. Currently. Floyd the rapist. Floyd the rapist who was the roommate. Yep. Okay. Bob, the happy looking co-worker. And Brian were all there. Bob and Brian were in on it? That's what <gasps> he's saying anyway. Okay, I did not see that coming. So Ken's role, he was a lookout. He was supposed to keep a lookout for everybody. To tell well, he didn't do coming. a very good job. Brian died. No, nope, Brian <laughs> died. So the day of the heist, Marge picks Ken up. She tells him, you know what? You're driving the getaway car. So they go to his shell station Bill makes the pizza call and they head to the tower site to wait for Brian. Okay. Brian delivers the pizza, but he's not aware at this point he's going to be wearing a bomb. So he oh. is terrified and tries to run. Well, yeah. Yeah. So Bill pulls out a gun. They hold Brian down and they strap the bomb on him unwillingly. Oh he's yelling the whole time. I don't want to do it. I didn't agree to this, you know. Right. Right. Marge puts that T-shirt on him to cover up the bomb. <laughs> Here, wear this. It'll help. <laughs> yeah. And she tells him, if you're to get caught, you tell them that some black guys held you down and put a bomb on you. Nice. Right? Wow. So they give him the cane gun. They tell him, if he has any trouble, use this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to hurl, hurl in this. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then they go up to a parking lot across the street from the bank. Marge and Ken sit in the car and watch the bank being robbed. The cops start coming and the pair drive to Bill's house. They're like, we're okay. out. So they didn't actually see the bomb go off. Ken later says he watched the news and he felt so bad. He thought the bomb had been a fake. So okay. a lot of them had. So Brian probably thought it was a fake, but still was like, well, just in case I don't want it on me. He wasn't ready. Oh, my God. So now that they have Ken's confession, they go confront Floyd, who okay. Ken said put the device on Brian's neck. He was the one who had actually put it on him. Floyd knows he's cornered, and he gets an amazing deal for his confession. He gets immunity if he testifies <gasps> against Marge. Immunity for testifying. But he's yeah. already in jail because he was wanted for rape. Yeah, for rape. Okay. But he might have been out by then because they, they let rapists go sometimes. Oh, this is true. Yeah. 
And he was wanted for rape. Doesn't mean he actually did it. True. But I think okay. he did, actually. Yeah. I think he did. Because okay. he went to He was jail in jail for it. for it, right? Yeah. Floyd says he did help make some of the pieces for the bomb collar, but that Bill did most of the work. Right. Okay. Because some of them were just for kicks to throw it, to make yeah. it complicated. Make it all complicated. He did put the bomb on Brian and then run away. He said he tried to run away because he thought he was going to get killed. He thought they were going to shoot him afterwards to keep him silent. Oh, so boy. he he ran. <laughs> so that's why he moved out. Okay. Um, in 2007, charges were filed against Marge for armed bank robbery, conspiracy, and using a destructive device in the crime of violence. Okay. But because Brian had something to do with the heist, the death pen- penalty's off the table. Uh, Isn't that crazy? Because they couldn't f- be sure who did what exactly or Yeah. Something? So they think he was part of the heist, so they can't charge her with killing him which is kind of sad even though i don't i think he was originally part of it but didn't realize the extent and had tried to back out so he became a victim oh my god marge was found mentally competent to stand trial okay and she was found guilty and was serving 30 years plus oh no life plus 30 years wow wow but marge always insisted she had nothing to do with the heist and she died of cancer in 2017 Oh, boy. So no one was ever charged with Brian Wells' murder. Oh, my God. Ken Barnes was sentenced to 45 years in jail for his part. Whoa. I know. But since he testified against Marjorie, his sentence was cut in half. Oh, boy. And he later died in prison in 2019. Oh, my gosh. What a shit show for nothing. Like, Holy cow. Shit show. So that's the story. Of, they called it the pizza bomber. <laughs> Because, yeah, I don't think he willingly had anything to do with it, basically. So. Oh, my. What a hot mess. Freaking hot mess. And Marge, whoa, she was a hot. When they did interviews with her, she was yelling the whole time. She was oh, my very, gosh. Oh, the brows thing. While she was in jail, she told cellmates she wanted to seem more crazy so that she could get plead insanity so she would oh. shave her eyebrows and act really crazy whenever it is very off-putting around. when someone doesn't have eyebrows <laughs> totally it's like you see them and you like see somebody and you're like <laughs> something doesn't look right about them but i can't put my finger on yeah. what it is that was a good way to go that was though, a good man. way i she mean look, yeah she did look crazy so that's you what said she, was, she was good looking at one time i'm uh-huh. like mm, i don't see it man. i know i'll have to show you a picture she was really pretty but it, this she's had a rough life by this time that's a lot of people. A lot of people who were uh, involved had in their this hands shit. in this. Oh yeah. my god, what a hot mess! Sounds like a well, TV mo- movie or made for it TV does. movie. I'm, I'm not that I'm happy that someone died, but no. at least it wasn't an innocent victim. It was a uh, someone who was involved, and he should. I mean, he Possibly, chose to be involved. Yeah. Possibly. His family doesn't believe he had anything to do with it, and that he really did just deliver a pizza and they threw it on him, but. You and know, they just said he happened to be there? Yeah, I think mm. that. And, you know, Marjorie's smart enough. She knew that if you uh, said that they were involved, you can't get the death penalty. So mm. who knows? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Who knows? Gosh. I know. One detonation. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh. That was a hot mess of a story. <laughs> I know. Crazy. I, I will try to share the video, too. But wow. very sad. That's Dang, that is no. one hell of a way to kick off season 10, man. Seriously. Well, and that's why I had to bring all the pictures, because otherwise, all the different I, names. I needed that to help me with the the fate. It was I needed that to help me rem- keep the name straight, because I had like an image in my head of who they were. Right. And that's how it helps me, too. So <laughs> I wish oh I could flash it on the podcast, but you guys gosh. might have to wait until we put the pictures out on social media. Definitely. I'm sorry. We can't yeah. flash you on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can try. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! If you do, I might play the video online. I'm just <laughs> I would never do that to us. No oh evidence. My gosh. All, right. All right. No evidence. Yeah. Can't yeah. have that. Did you want to hear the the sources? Oh gosh, yes. Let's see. Amazing let's story. Hear. Okay. So the main one. Oh, you'll have to watch this. It's like a three part series, I think. Maybe okay. a four part series called Evil Genius The True Story of America's Most Diabolical Bank Heist in 2018. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. People.com, pizzabomber.com. Pizza bomber. They have their own website? <laughs> yeah, because there's this guy, a, a man who wrote a whole book about this. Oh boy. Okay. Because there's enough to go for a whole book. Right. Okay. Uh, CNN.com, abcnews.go.com, and newyorkpost.com. I it's know. It's very speed. It is very speed. Movie speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when FBI agents were talking about it, they said that people will claim they have a bomb on them or they'll claim they have a gun, but less than 1% of the time do they actually have a loaded gun or a actual bomb. Really? So it's really rare that they actually do. That's an interesting tidbit. I think it was 1%. It was very low. It was insane. That's crazy. All right. Well, that was a great story. Holy cow. Yeah. The bomber. Poor Brian. I feel bad for him after all that. He, all he, he wanted to do was deliver a, a pizza. I just wanted to deliver a pizza. And he was yes. kind of a simple guy, I think, maybe. Hmm. Well, I mean, he was simple. sitting there with a bomb strapped on him eating a lollipop. I mean. <laughs> just didn't oh know how God. serious it was. I know. It's crazy. Wow. That was good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy season 10. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hey, Oddies, thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. If you're a longtime listener, hey, we cannot thank you enough for your continued support. And if you're a new listener, thanks for giving us a try. If you like us, please drop us a like, subscribe, or rate us so we can share our stories with more people around the world. And if you'd like more information, like links to our podcast and socials, along with our Patreon fan page, Those links are all on Linktree under ODFM Podcast. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash ODFM Podcast. Side note, you guys, we're obsessed with fan art, and we love making things with it, like stickers for our fans. So if you'd like us to use your designs, send it to us at ODFMPodcast at gmail.com. And if we use your design, we'll be sure to send you a sticker. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM, hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful.